Are you a team leader or broker looking for tips on how to run a successful agent training program? This is the episode for you. Join us today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. This is the Wandering But Not Lost WBNL podcast where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Okay. Well, welcome to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 229, and you can find all of those show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, we're taking a week off from the Ask Five, talking about training agents again, which is, you know, one of our fortes. Correct. And we had a little series, and over in our, I think it was episode 223. 223. 223. Correct. We started this little series on what do you need to, to have for an agent training program? So we know we have the link in the show notes. If you're watching on YouTube, it's down there in the description. So go check that out because we're not going to rehash all that because this is part two of that, which is now that you have a training program, you actually have the materials and whatnot. We're going to give you our best insights, our tips, our experience. Personally, I've run training programs. We've mm -hmm. helped teams and companies run their training programs. So we're going to give you our best stuff today on how to actually run a successful agent training program. That's our topic today. I love it. Yeah. And we have one more in the series, which will be coming at a later date. And that's, it's just the follow up of our best insights on coaching and retaining your agents through once you're through the, your, you know, specific training program, there's always ongoing coaching and training. And we'll talk about that in another episode. Okay. Jana Brian, we've both been in the business for a long, long time and have seen a ton of training programs, especially for new agents, right? New agent training programs, which, you, you know, I, I, any agent should probably go through that because there's things they didn't build. We talk about that all the time. Um, but I've seen it go from like, you know, a two week program to a 12 week, you know, uh, space spaced out, you know, um, what was what are those called? time, space, time, continuums, I don't know, whatever. But, you know, these super long programs, I mean, is there really a magic number for how long a training program should be? I don't know, you know, and I was thinking about this because my everything has changed. I, there are maybe a few companies that are having agents come in and go through a sort of like a post-licensing. So post-licensing is scheduled that you can go do it in a whole week all day. But when I got in the business 30 years ago, my training program was all day for a yep. couple weeks. It was intense. Yep. Well, there wasn't time to get out in the field because you were just, but I feel in hindsight now that's too much. So I am the yep. believer in it. We're going to go into it, but having it stretched out over like our, our program that we have called real estate sales builder is 12 modules, which is perfect for 12 weeks. But even with some of our coaching clients, um, companies that we work with, they give people a little bit of break in between and maybe the 12 week turns into a 15 week program with three breaks in there for people to have time to catch up on the work. So I don't believe in depth is enough. It is too much right now. It's overwhelming. I think you have to mix it up and have people learn something and go out and do something. We need to get people in the field right away, not waiting another two weeks after they're waiting on their license. If, if we're talking new agent training. And it's always so hard, too, because, you know, when you start a training program, if it's going to be any length like that, you're going to have people that are going to join during the middle of that and yes. in the middle of the programming. I guess the point that I'm trying to make is there is not going to be the magic, no. perfect training program for your agents. So well, it's all about skill set building, right? And, so and honestly, you just, you just yeah. nailed it. It's like you're not always taking a fresh group of recruits in no. today on the 15th of the month. They're always going to come in and go. So you have to have a if you're going to have a company or a team, and I can think of our friend Rich Brockin's team that we worked with for so many years, yep. they were a mini company within a company. They really were a team within a, but really a brokerage within a brokerage. And they constantly had the model of most companies bringing in fresh recruits every month throughout the month, but the training was ongoing. So that's only, you need to run your training ongoing if you have a large team, but if you're just going to have a smaller team, you may run your program you know, once or twice a year, or you may have to do more one-on-one -on -one training. So it's all, you can custom, it, the whole point is if you have a training program, and it's not up in your head, that's what we're really covering here. Do you have the self-contained materials right. and so forth so that you can just let people self-coach and at their own pace 
followed by jumping into some of your weekly meetings. So let's jump in and we'll talk a little bit yeah, about. And that is the beauty of our program, right? Because you have the videos that you can watch, you know, as you need them. So yes, absolutely. So, so we have we seven go. points that we're going to cover here today on how to run a successful agent training program. And the first one, we just were alluding to it. You must have the materials. You must have curriculum, whether that be videos you've recorded, which is again, go back to episode 223 and we talk about how to set up a training program, do it yourself, uh, partner with us. We have the program already done, which is by the way, not just for new agents. Right. We have we designed a program, Real Estate Sales Builder, that was a little bit designed for a new agent could go through it. But what we found over the years is agents that have been in the business for a while don't really have the core systems in place. So our training program covers the core real estate business systems that you have to have in place to be successful in this business, real estate sales builder. And that is the program that many teams and brokers around the country are leveraging so that then they can put their spin on it and they don't have to stop and spend the time to, to develop their own. So if you do, you have to have it. I find Matt that a lot of people that are doing training with their teams or even brokers, we know because brokers have reached out to us, right. we have kind of a rough outline and it's kind of just their experience. If the broker's doing the training, it's like, Today we're going to talk talk about working with buyers and they just know and they're just sharing and there's really no content. People want content. They want the checklist. They want the materials. They want the how to. They want the videos that they could go watch, uh, you know, uh, you know, at their leisure or whenever, like streaming, like stream when they want to. But I, I'm going to say something. You can have the videos. You can't rely on the fact that if you had our program alone, they're not going to do it unless you actually have what we're going to talk about today having people get together and use that as how you're going to go through the training program. You have to have this number one, but it's not enough to have just an online training program. and think everybody's going to go through it and know what they need to do. Okay. Great. So that's Great. the first key. You must have the materials. It must be organized. You must have an outline. And then number two, you need to identify who's going to do the training. So again, this is so specific to who you are. If you're a small team, it may be you. If you have a team of 10 to 20 people, maybe there's an agent on your team that is really a good trainer or maybe you're going to empower to be there. Or maybe it's a hybrid of all of those where you as the team leader or the broker do a couple key classes because uh, agents will love that you're coming in and doing some of the training. Rich used to do that. He, he mm -hmm. used to teach and they loved his training when he would have, he would teach three or four things during the, uh, the session that, that went over like 20, he had 20, how many? 23. What how many chromosomes do we have? That, yeah, the D twenty three. It was <laughs> there were twenty three <laughs> different topics, and he would do most uh, many of them. But then he had the perfect example of a couple other agent managers that love training, and so there was a mixture of people training. So it can be any of those things above. You can hire someone to be your trainer at the end. I'm going to talk about ways to compensate that person, right. and then you could, uh, you know, you could use agents that are guest trainers. You know, some of your people that maybe have gone through the training can come in and help cover or help you teach a class or whoever it's going to be. So identify who that is uh, and have that part of your, that's number two. Okay. So and you know, it's, that can be, this can be a really tough step in the whole process because finding the right person is key, but it's really important that you do find the right person or people to do it. Cause otherwise you're going to be doing that, that rehiring of that person or that, you know, reassigning of that person over and over and over again. We talk about this in real estate team builder when, you know, putting the right people in the right seats. So uh, make sure that you take a little time in that process. And just a little uh, heads up, Matt is kind of alluding to something. We'll speak it to the end here. We'll tell you about our certification program we're doing for trainers and coaches around our sales builder. That's our newest offering. We're in, in the midst of getting that together for you and hope to have that launched this month here in March, which is basically a companion piece for team leaders and brokers that want to know how to set the training program. We're just talking about the bullet points today, but that'll be an, a, a whole course uh, with a lot of details. I mean, we, we're talking about, we have coach manuals. We, we have the literally the like uh, lesson plans, what to cover in each um, session. We have all of that in a program that we're going to offer to anybody that wants to get that. So number three, you need to have this commitment from agents to attend. So just wanted to talk about things I've seen in the past, things I've done. Now, one of the things is when you hire or you onboard is to really, if you really have a solid training program, it becomes the major recruiting piece for you. So you want to be able to let people know when you're able to say, 
there's training on demand on delivery for you whenever you want it. Plus, let me describe how we do our training program and how we meet weekly or whatever it's going to be. I think it's there's a couple ways to go with this. You can bring it on as a value add saying you provide that free to the agents. There is some folks that believe free, and sometimes I believe this, if it's free, there's no value. So you could come from the place of, uh, you know, having the agent pay for the training and then reimbursing them after their first closing. So there's some buy-in. So you decide if you want to offer it that way, but you'll, you'll, you'll find it's a huge attraction for agents that need training. And then I really believe in a written commitment or a contract, an agreement that says when you attend this training program and you can, you could, even if you were partnering with us, you could co-brand it and say, this is your training program called whatever. 12 weeks to success and you're leveraging our underlying training, but you get the commitment is here's what I expect from you agent. And here's what you can expect from us. Right. This is what we're going to provide for you, whether that be one-on-one -on -one coaching, holding these meetings, going out in the field with them, helping them realize what they're going to get out of attending this training is what needs to be in this commitment. I've used some of those things. I can think back to, I used to have this thing called pro club. One of my first management jobs back in the uh, prudential days we called it pro club and we met every Friday and it was a, um, it was really when I, when I think about what our program is today, a lot of it came from that. What I used to do in that pro club every, every week and formulated what, what's the good sequence to help an agent that's new to the business get up and running. Okay. So that I think it's super important that you set the expectations and you have a commitment to a, of some sort, cause it's not just training, it's coaching. Right. You mean mentoring and coaching these folks while you're training them. And that's the added value. All right. So yeah, I really think that the whole uh, have the agent pay and then reimbursing them. If, you know, if you don't just want to collect their cash, if, you know, reimbursing them at their close of their first escrow was a great way to do it. That's the way it was when I went, to, I went through. And I have to tell you, that was a little motivational too, because it was almost like you got paid when you got exactly. out of training, even though it was your own money. It's interesting because, um, you know, new agents are poor. <laughs> yeah, true. Right. So number four, I really recommend you must, I just mentioned my early days of, of uh, managing. I had a weekly pro club meeting at a minimum. You need to have one meeting a week, you know, in a, a, a perfect scenario might be a, and we have a, our, our group realty one group up in New Jersey is doing it this way where they have a Tuesday training session, but she also has workshops on Saturdays. I love that idea. So you know, it depends on who your people are. Are you hiring part-time people? Do you need to do something in the evening? Is it, a, is it a weekend day? You'll figure that all out. But if you had a, a set time every week for at least one, but you could do it twice a week, you know, it's a lot though. So I really ha actually recommend if you're going to do something twice a week, then have a formal training where it's kind of interactive. You're having them role play. This is not just lecture. This training is more, even our training, if, if people are doing it, it's, des it's designed if they're doing it on their own, our training program is designed that they watch the videos and then they have a let's get to work checklist that says, here's your action items for the next week. You need to go put this in, in play, go do these things, get out in the field and start doing things or put together your buyer consultation or whatever the week is, but then following it up with a week in the field, or maybe you do something, for example, if you're teaching uh, how to work with buyers, you may have another class in the week, which is how to fill out the contracts. So you're going to spend an hour, talking about working with buyers and doing the qualifying questions and closing the sales cycle. But then you're going to sit and go for another hour because you don't want to have people sit for two or three hours. I mean, at max, I would say is 90 minutes to two hours. Yeah. Um, you know, just for, it's because you need people role playing and then you could have a workshop where if you're doing open houses, you could go out in the field and everybody, you do an open house and everybody comes and does it together. So, and we have all of that stuff that's in our coaching manual. These are all ideas that we have on how to actually implement the training program. Yeah, so that's, Ludi, that's Ludi Chanios, Chanios from uh, the ROG New Jersey office does all the things you just talked about. She has her live when, or Tuesday training. She does a Saturday Zoom training that she does with the agents, kind of a little recap and brainstorming mm -hmm. and, you know, QA and all that kind of stuff. And then she also does the in the field work, open houses and stuff. So, I mean, she really covers all the bases. She's like the best person to, uh, you know, that has really taken the materials and really she's run with it, right? If you want more information on Ludi, you can go back and we did an Ask Five with her um, about a month ago. You can go hear a little more from Ludi. So go back to the, um, the show exactly. and find her. 
so, all right, so you've got, you'll design that, but you must stick to this training and have some kind of a schedule. Okay, so I really recommend that. And then let's talk about the myth. So in this day and age, I think nothing beats live classroom and everybody face to face. And you really need to encourage this. Um, you know, you could do it via Zoom. It's just not as interactive. Um, you know, you could do a comp, a hybrid and do both. Um, they're just, and you could effectively do, you know, I teach continuing education classes and on Zoom, there are ways to get people to interact, right? You can put them in, if you're going to do role playing, you could put people into uh, work uh, breakout groups and have them, and you as the instructor can pop in and you can have them practice. So you can deliver via Zoom and you may find that you have more buy-in and maybe you mix it up and do a hybrid in some weeks it's this way and other weeks when you really need to have them. Or maybe you do it Zoom and then you go out in the field on another day. You just need to find out what's going to work for your people to get them to show up. The challenges with Zoom is people don't always pay attention. You know, and if you're going to have Zoom, they need to be not distracted, not on their phone, just like if they were in the classroom, on camera. you got to engage with them and you can't just be a talking head. You've got to stop every once in a while and uh, ask questions and get them to share. And, and you can make it that way. I mean, I'm saying this because just even trying to get my team together for a meeting yeah. in person is really difficult right now because everybody's got stuff, even though we have it scheduled, it's like, Oh, this came up, that came up. But I bet if I had a zoom, most people would be there. So, uh, you'll have to find that out and figure it works, but, um, you know, just, and it, it all depends on what do you have? Do you have full-time people or are you hiring part-time people? This is the challenge for, for a company or a team. Uh, you, it's really hard to make a It's very, very difficult to pick the right time that works for everybody. So you just have to go with something and stick with it. That's right. Okay. Hey, um, it also depends on how big of a group you actually have. When I was uh, in my office, I went to a, a the, the company training program for, it was either two or three weeks, forgot what it was. And then when we get back on the office, when you was with when I was with the mentor, we only had five agents. So there were five agents plus the mentor. And we would sometimes go out, we'd be like, she'd be like, come on, let's go. And we go out and we'd, uh, we'd preview homes. But in between previewing the homes, it would be some role play and talking about dialogue. And so it was almost like taking the, the program on the road while we were actually doing real real estate stuff so it actually was really good because it almost tricked us into learning <laughs> well honestly matt that's a whole nother way to deliver the training and or who are your trainers you could have a formal training of like assigned mentors you know depending on the size of your of your team you may have somebody buddy up or you may have your agents have accountability uh, partners. We'll talk a little bit about that in our next segment when we get into coaching and accountability for the training. But that's a great, a great point because it's almost, I think people work better if they have a accountability partners or if they have a mentor to work with. Number six is to publish the schedule with the class topics, the days, the times, and then remind people, have a whole system for this. Okay. Just, you know, you, you got to have it on their calendars, right? You already got their commitment to attend. So go the extra mile, publish it, let them know what's coming up. If you have guest speakers coming up, publish the schedule, send them calendar invites so they put it on their calendar, send class reminders, do all that so that you can do the best to have people not to give you the excuses of, of why. You know, people will come to the training if they have value. But then it's in this day and age, everybody's so wanting to do things on their own time. That's the challenge I've seen in the last few years, yep. Matt. You know what yep. I mean? Then with COVID, it made it worse. Everybody's like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to I'm going to consume that content when I'm ready. And what you have to get across is that the interaction of coming into a live training session or going out into a field is where people are going to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And I have so many agents now tell me they miss that. They want the interaction and they need the they need the uh, I guess the boost and the motivation to be around other people instead of sitting at home thinking that they're going to learn what they need to do. Right. Because yep. your point is, and we'll talk about some of that in our next session, like everything Matt was saying a minute ago, there's so many things that you can go do. Like right now in our market, it would be every day. I sat with two new agents yesterday and said, um, so tell me what you know about new homes. And they just didn't know. And they've been in the business for months. I'm like, OK, well, this is what you need to go do every single day. Go out and look at new homes. And here's the five things you need to go find out about. It. You're going to start getting yep. empowered about inventory and all this. And those are things agents knew agents knew and that need business sure field looking at inventory uh shadowing other people learning how to do all that and that's what your program is going to do 
Go, go with this person who's going to go do a listing presentation. Go with this person to do an open house. Go to a signing appointment. You learn by doing. I was in a signing appointment yesterday, and the escrow officer was training a member on her team how to present the closing. Perfect. That's the kind of stuff you have to do with agents. You know, it's so funny about real estate. My wife and I, you know, we live in the same area that I, that we have ever since I got my license. So we're driving around and we're in these, you know, we driving through neighborhoods. She goes, have you been in these houses? Yeah. And I can explain them, you know, 25 years later, it's hysterical that you can walk, drive through your town and you know what all the houses look like inside. It's kind of wild. You know what I mean? So because, because of your, of what you did when you were new exactly. and you, you know, you can say who the builder was and what the model is exactly. like, you know, exactly. You know, so, I mean, it is all about expertise, right? So if you do it enough, you, and you remember it. So it's interesting. Totally. So number seven, interactive training. We've just been sort of talking about that. Interactive yeah. training with activities and accountability. So it is so important. And the way we designed our training program is that we're going to talk about business planning and then we're going to actually do a business plan and set goals. Okay. Then it's going to get into how to hold an effective open house. So there's the formal training on how to hold an open house where, you're teaching it, you're getting Q&A, people are sharing ideas, and then you're going to go out and do an open house. Walk through the process of scheduling it and how to have our, our uh, open house is all about, training is all about maximizing the open house. It's not just about conducting, it's about how to get the most people to come to it, how to follow up afterwards, checklists, and so forth. But that's what we mean by that. And the perfect, if I was back running a team or of new agents, this is exactly what I'd be doing, having a weekly meeting, with a topic and then some activity that would be scheduled probably on a Saturday or Sunday, uh, teaming the people up, having in the sessions as much role playing as possible. If we're gonna talk about open houses today, we're gonna go through all that, then we're gonna have about 30 minutes. That's why I feel like 90 minutes is good. 30 minutes where I'm gonna break them into groups after we've just talked about what to say to greet someone at an open house, have them practice and role play and do feedback every single time you do training there needs to be some interactivity and then some component where they're going to learn something for that week about whatever topic you're talking about right. that's really it and here's one more thing about that um it's it's don't worry about the fact that you have people joining at different times and maybe somebody today has a listing you know most agents start with buyers but maybe somebody comes into the business you know i'm talking a lot about new agents too but honestly this program is is not just for new agents. It is totally not so entry level. Our training in particular has components to it that are like next level systems and helping people. You can dumb it down a little bit, if you will, and, and just cover the basics so pe new people aren't overwhelmed. But the seasoned agent or the agent that's been in the business a little while that never really got great training would get so much out of our program. So you know, it's refresher training. It's back to the basics training. So many people need to get back to the basics. If they got into the business a couple of years ago, they it's, it was a different world then. So they don't know how to do listing presentations because they really weren't probably taking listings. So there wasn't so, so little inventory. So the whole point on that is you've just got to be adaptable and, um, and not worry that today, you know, there's no perfect way. You stick with us. And that's why we designed the 12 weeks we did. There is a little flow to it, business planning to, you know, putting your business, your financial systems in place and everything in between. But if somebody comes in today, you might have to do a little one-on-one -on -one with them and help them with that listing presentation, for example. So it brings me to how to compensate a trainer, mentor, coach. So if it's not you, there are a couple ways to, to do this. And you could straight up pay somebody, right? It, again, you, you don't need to hire someone unless you've got a big team, you know, really big team or your brokerage. And it's not the best use of your time. So if you're the kind of team leader or broker that's not out working, then maybe it is who you are. You know, you're the trainer, you're the coach, you're the one who wants to do this and you're helping them and you have a manager that's managing them and maybe the manager's doing the training or maybe you, you have a super large team and you or a brokerage and you have a trainer. So straight up, you can pay a salary. Obviously, that's what a lot of companies do. But on the mid-sized brokerages and small brokerages and teams, it can be as easy as, comp this is what I do in team building. I talk about your, your manager, you compensate them by maybe having them on a higher split. They're, they're an active producing agent on your team. So they could be on a higher split. You could have them uh, not have to pay any, if you're a company, they don't have to pay any monthly fees if you have monthly fees. So you could give them perks like that. Maybe there's office space that you give them 
those are compensation. Those are things to give them as incentives that don't cost you. I mean, cost you a little bit to give up an income producing office, for example, if you're a broker, but you get what I mean. Then you can, a combination of all these things I'm talking about, then you can simply do something like if you are charging for training, maybe that, maybe you're charging a couple hundred dollars for training. Maybe you're giving part of that to your, to your agent. I mean, to your trainer, your mentor, your coach, you can also pay them on uh, a percentage of so much of the first couple closings that of the people that they're mentoring. So um, there's a variety of ways. You don't have to pay a salary. You could simply, and you know, the right coach trainer is someone who loves training, who maybe has a background in training, who really wants to do that is maybe actively selling, but they're not so busy that they can't manage the training program. And they get a little compensation because maybe they make a little extra money because they're training five, 10 people and they're going to make um, you know, a percentage or a flat amount or something on the, on those people's next three closings, for example. And that can, that can really incentivize a, a trainer to work along with whatever else you could do. Any other ideas to add to that? Well, I, 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 I'll say one thing I can tell you that, that is the most critical thing here is don't cheap out on it either. That's mm-hmm. really key because this is a key, a, cre- a key role in your organization, right? So don't be a cheapskate on this. <laughs> don't. Find, the, yeah. find what's going to be the win-win for both of you. Uh, mm-hmm. But don't uh, but don't cheap out because uh, you're going to be churn and burn on trainers and mentors if you're going to do that. And that's just going to yeah. be an issue. So. I mean, clearly, if you're a large company, you're paying somebody to do this. It's a full time job because uh, you're constantly yeah. recruiting. But if you're, if you're that average size team and you're bringing a few, you know, this whole thing, by the way, do you need a whole full blown training program if you're only going to have four or five people on your team? Probably not, yeah. no. you know, but maybe you want it because you want to have some additional incentive for people. But obviously, we're talking about the. 10 to 20 people and people come and go and you want to have something that you're, if you're consistently recruiting people, you need a training program. That's, that's what right. I, that's what my thoughts are. All right. And we've got that for you. Here, here we go. We're going to, we're putting a, this co- core agent training program is our, uh, the our core agent training program is called real estate sales builder. And we're doing a trainer certification course that would complement that. And it's going to be how to leverage our 12 modules. Again, it comes with, Everything from how to conduct the training, all the details of things we've talked about today, how to do all our best stuff on accountability and coaching. We have, we have stuff built into the program for accountability and coaching that we design that you can customize. We're going to provide all the supplemental training guide, everything that you need to be able to put a solid program like all the things we're talking about today. What are the exercises? What's the recommended thing that you do when you're doing this? What is the extra company or training that comes from your MLS that would supplement the week of, of working with sellers and buyers and so forth. Uh, that's all you have to do. You have to bring the training. Our program obviously can't teach contracts for the all the states around the union here. So you've got to bring that and bring those resources. But we walk through how to do all that with you. Uh, so and then we, ha- if you partner with us, then we handle the delivery. The we'll talk through. We'll customize it with you offer discounts on our training, depending on the size of your program. It's very customizable for you. And we're in the middle of putting that final touches on that and hope to have that up here in the month of March. Uh, Commitment to get it done here. I've been looking at the materials that I have developed for it for, for previous customers and clients that we have. And so we're going to do it like we do all our training programs and deliver it in small bites and a couple modules and, uh, We'll let you know if you're interested. You can reach out to us and get get on the waiting list to be one of the first ones to test it with us or to, to use it. And we'll even include a consultation session for you in that whole setup uh, of how to do a dual one-on-one coaching with you. So we're excited about getting that. For those of you out there that need to know how to put a training program, basically turnkey with the exception of putting your finishing touches on it and your market's uh, customs rules, forms, um, things that your company might have. You need to integrate all that, but we'll certainly help you figure out how to make that happen. Yeah. The heavy lifting has been done. You can come in and just put the finishing, you know, put the little bow tie on it. And uh, then voila, you have a training program. It's pretty awesome. So all that's going to be coming super soon. Hey, Jenna Brent, do you remember um, your, tra- your, your uh, trainer and your first mentor when you first got in the business? Yeah, totally. It was one of the first owners of the company. Um, you know, it's one of the reasons that I joined the company was Mark Masivic, uh, very, very inspirational. And he taught, he was a broker owner that taught a lot of the training and 
And then there were a couple other trainers when I first, you know, the first the first year I was in the business. It was such good training. It's really why I chose it. I went and interviewed at a couple companies and I chose the one that I felt I didn't know anything about real estate. So I chose the one that I felt was going to do it. And I really did do do a great job. I used some of those techniques I've learned back then, even now. Yeah. When I started at First Team Real Estate, we had our, our, our actual two or three week training at the corporate office, like I said. But back at the office, my mentor was Linda Rocha. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, Linda Rocha. She's uh, the manager of the Corona Office or Realty One Group West here in Southern California. And, um, you know, she's been in the business all these years. She's she went into management a long, long time ago. But and she's a very good manager, a great recruiter. But it's just funny, you know, when you you, uh, you start your career with someone and I, you know, kind of Linda and I followed, followed each other around for quite a while there in the business. That's uh, funny. I forgot you told me that. Yeah. You know, that's cool that your company had like a mentorship program. Ours did not have a a true mentorship. There was just a several levels of management support. So it was like you went to the main corporate office for the training and there was like, it's like going to school. There was like 30 people right. in the training, yeah. Yeah. A big company, and it would be all the stuff and they would tell you to get out there and do things. But it wasn't like I had a mentor as it was. I had like a, the offices were large and there was a broker and one to two sales managers that you could go ask questions. So that's kind of how I learned. What I liked about that mentorship back at the office is we happen to have, it was a program, like I said, and just like you just mentioned, there's like 30 or 40 people in that main training program. And there were five from our office and the five of us were, it was so awesome because it was just like your support system, right? We are all new. We previewed together every day. We did stuff with Linda, you know, tw twice a week. It was just, it was a, it, there was camaraderie in that that really I look back on those days at early in real estate and it was a lot of fun. It was really a good, we had a good time. We're going to have to ask Linda Roach if she wants to come on and do an Ask Five with us. That's, that's, that's great. Nice. Yeah, nice. we should do that. Um, okay. Uh, speaking of Ask Five, next week on episode uh, 230, we have Azim Jessa. You know, you know Azim. So give us a little uh, info on him. Yeah, Azim is just amazing. I was, I think, I think I was his first broker at, at his previous company, our previous company. And he is now at the company I'm at here at Urban Nest. And he is just gotten, he's just amazing. He's got a group. He's got a, uh, I don't know, six or seven people on his team. And he's always just killing. He's the nicest guy, but he has a great team and they're very productive. And we're excited to hear what he, what he believes is his keys to success for running his team and, and him personally. Yeah, I think I read he relocated. He grew up in Canada, I think I read in his uh, bio. Mm -hmm. So, you know, moved yep. down to okay. the States. Yep. Interesting. Cool stuff. Learn from the Zine. Yeah. All right. Well, join us next uh, uh, next time on episode uh, 330, and you can hear more of what Azim has to say when we 330. That's up to 330. Excuse me. 230. Boy, give us another 100 there. Uh, 230 and uh, see what he has to, to say. In the meantime, you can find all the show notes for this episode over at wbnlpodcast.com. This was episode 229, not 329, 229, uh, wbnlpodcast.com. Anything else, Jan? Last minute or last words? No, I think it's gorgeous outside. I went for a walk before we podcasted today and I need to get out and get, well, it made me realize today I have got to get up and get out more. I went out yesterday afternoon because it was the first sunny, non-cloudy day we've had in a long time. And I cannot even tell you how beautiful the mountains are. Never in the 30 some odd years I've lived in Southern California has the entire mountain range from San Jacinto and Palm Springs all the way up to Mount Wilson in you know Hollywood been covered with snow. I mean, it, it is absolutely unbelievable. So it, same here. It's cra crazy. I love it. I love it. And it and it's still so cold outside. It's sunny now, but still, you know, it doesn't even, it's not supposed to get over 55 or 60 today. I'll um, take it. It'll be a while before that snow melts off. So we have some enjoyment and then we can just hopefully have some nice water coming up this spring. That's right. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, did you hear the California? I heard something yesterday that parts of California are not, 20% of California is out of the drought now. Yeah, I believe that, especially up north because it's been, they really got it. For us is supposedly not in the drought zone. And then there's other California that's like not as critical as it was because of all this uh, rain and Part of me uh, wishes they would ever release that information because that does not mean go out and uh, water your lawns, people. Exactly. <laughs> if we can serve now when we have water, we won't have to worry about it as much. Down exactly. We'll see how that All right, goes. let's go. We need more. Anyway, like Jan was saying, get up, get out, live the life you dreamed, and be forever wandering, but not lost.